I'd like to welcome everybody to the first um, commemoration of the International Day of Kenya for Blue Skies. Um, this was a day that was adopted It's a resolution by the UN Assembly that was late last year. And the reason is not far-fetched. Um, we all know that the um, air pollution is a challenge to us globally, particularly uh, um, for our health. I mean, a couple of um, young people now, you find out a couple of young people, or people that don't smoke at all, or are not associated with places where you, you envisage that they will be affected by anything related to smoke, and now diagnosed for things like lung cancer and whatnot. So that um, tells us that this is a, a big, the major issue that we need to tackle. And considering the status of legal states in Nigeria as a whole, considering the population, considering the level of industrialization, and the projections for what the population will be in the next um, couple of years, there's a, I mean, there's a reason, there's just a main reason why we need to talk about this. So, because these conversations can now influence either policy development or policy review that will either resolve into projects or um, open access funding that will help legal states to tackle this challenge. Obviously, it's not something the states can do alone, considering the um, dwindling funds that are affecting states now. So we feel having this commemorating this day and having this conversation will help the agency that's in charge of regulating the environment and the state as a whole to plan for the future. Um, fortunately, the next 10 years is very um, important. And I say important because uh, that's the decade of action that has been designated by the UN as well. So between now and the um, year 2030, uh, we expect countries and governments to work towards achieving the SDGs as well. And one of the, I mean, the SDGs goals has to do with uh, life on land, um, has to do with the environment, which also captures air pollution. So it's very imperative that governments at all levels, either local, state, or federal, talk about, I'll start having these conversations now, so we can start working on uh, either policies that will, uh, as I said, influence projects or actions that will reverse the trend. And um, Fortunately, we're privileged to have um, um, people that are well qualified to talk to us about this challenge today. On our list, we have uh, Professor Greg Arabo from Vulcan Law University of IPE, who's a test decision and well known in this area of, um, um, of the specialist in internal medicine. We also have um, Ms. Rose Keffers, who's uh, passionate about the SDGs and has been working um, in the SDGs office in the last um, five years now. And I mean, if you follow the activities of the SDGs, you always see her either with the SSA or, I mean, very passionate about the SDGs. I mean, for people that follow the activities of the SDGs, passionate about climate change as well. And everything has to do with the environment. So, Phil, it'll be, it'll be good to tell us, especially to relate, to explain the link between air pollution and the achievements of the SDGs, and I said earlier, what the plans of the SDGs of this regards to the agenda for the next 10 years, and um, to let us know what they're doing. And finally, our host, um, Dr. Dolapo Fashaway, who is uh, gracious enough to let us use this platform to talk about this conversation, and also be able to now answer the question that we asked in the theme. I mean, achieving clean air for Lagos, is it something that can be achieved or something that's impossible? At the end of the day, we hope we'll be able to answer these questions. Um, without further ado, the uh, um, so the three speakers have ten minutes to. Yara, can you increase the volume of your system? Air pollution and the impacts on human health. So over to you, sir. Mr. Yara, please, can you increase the volume of your system? Yeah. We missed, we missed you there. Hello. Pardon? Yes, hello. Volume. I'm ready. One speaking first. Uh, well, yes, sir, if you're ready, you can go Well, ahead. I've been ready since. Well, um, for what I can see, the 10 minutes you gave us, it seems to be a conversational discussion rather than a political academic presentation. And, um, however, I would um, try to see if I can say the few things I want to say. I want to share our slides now. You have disabled the slides. Obviously, I mean, we said 10 minutes, but you can always... 
Uh, no, just we are not able to share the slides. Akita, I enable slide sharing. Okay, I follow. No, Lasepa enables slide sharing. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Dipo enables slide sharing. It's enabled now, sir. Okay. Um, see. Okay. It's great. Okay. It's great. Okay. Let's go to share from the beginning. Yeah. Are you with me now? Hello. Yes, yes we can hear you, yes. sir. Okay. Well, the the I'm looking at the time um, given for this uh, for this uh, presentation. I will not be able to go into details, but just to say, the first thing is that the environment has been changing over the years. Over the years, and you know, the ambient air has about a fifth oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide, but Air pollution since 1926 has been known to be a big factor, especially in the health and mortality of a lot of patients. And indoor pollution has also aggravated the situation. And um, we all know the various, various sources of um, air pollution. And the one we are dealing with here is the natural um, um, sources. Now, studies have shown that air pollution is leads to three basic health effects, the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, and the neurological system. And it all depends on three, three or four factors. One, the susceptible um, patient or host, that is the age, the disease condition, the immune state of the patients, the degree of exposure, and also the degree of the particular matters that is um, involved. Now, if we look at the various factors that can lead to air pollution, particulate matter seems to be a very important factor, especially if there's PM 2.5 or 0.1. And these are the, the ultra fine particles that goes into the lung. Ozone is also implicated. Carbon monoxide, which is due to um, partial combustion of um, um, incomplete combustion of carbon, carbons and fuels, and nitrous oxide and also sulfur dioxide with volcanic organic um, subjects. As far back as 1930, sulfur dioxide was related to increase in death in respiratory disease in Belgium. And in December 1952 to 53, sulfur dioxide caused about 12,000 deaths in London. A study in Lagos showed that air pollution caused about 11,200 deaths in 2018. Now, it's found out that looking at the little green book data, that exposure to air pollution in Nigeria is as high as 94%, whereas PM 2.5, which is above the average for Africa, which is 72%. And a study done by Oluo Boroku in Lagos shows a major health, uh, high health risk in air pollution in a lot of um, susceptible. Um, people. And that has also been documented in places like Umahia, Abia, Kaduna, and Onicha. Now, the, I, I quickly now go into the, then also we have, have also have the situation of wood burning and also domestic cooking, which is also a big problem. The use of pesticides, although those are usually an indoor pollution thing. Now, what are the major health effects of uh, air pollution? Now, there are at least four major effects on the skin, on the neurological system, on the respiratory system, and on the cardiovascular system. Let's look at the respiratory system. Now, respiratory system, one of the most, uh, the biggest issue here is that it can increase respiratory symptoms. The way they are exposed to a uh, PM 2.5, you can have rhinorrhea, nasal obstruction, cough, laryngospasm, vocal cord dysfunction, lower airway symptoms, 
pneumonia, wheezes, especially in children, and those who have asthma. It has also been found to be an important factor in the reduction of the lung function and a high index of cardiorespiratory morbidity and mortality. Patients who are exposed to um, a lot of toxic factors are only have reduced lung function when compared to those who are not exposed. Particularly patients who have asthma. You know, epidemiological studies have shown that air pollution is directly related to increased exacerbation, increased asthma attack, and poor control of patient's asthma, leading to increasing wheeze, and this patient having to use rescue medication to get over their situation. Another factor is COPD. COPD is a chronic obstructive airway disease and has been found to increase with patients that are exposed to air pollution, especially if those patients smoke. So smoking and air pollution have an addictive effect and it leads them to have increased exacerbation, increased mortality, and then respiratory failure. Now, this has been documented in numerous studies all over the world. Then air pollution also has also been found in especially patients that are exposed to a lot of biomax, you know, um, biomass burning. And if they also, if there's indoor pollution, and if they also smoke, that would increase their mobility from COPD, increase their respiratory symptom, redu reduce their lung function, increase their exacerbation. That means they come to the hospital more often and they have emergency visits and hospitalization, and then poor lung health and eventually death. Now, for children um, five years and below, it always leads to increased respiratory symptoms and can be a cause of absenteeism from school and presenteeism, that is, go to school and they're not able to concentrate. How of such death attributed to indoor exposure to pollutants and solid fuel burning? Lung cancer. Now, WHO data has shown that has shown that um, in, so let me just get this slide out of the way here. The WHO data shows that in 2008, there were at least 12.7 million new cases of cancer, you know, and that caused about 7.6 million deaths. And those things were attributed to lung pollution, and of which lung cancer was number one, 1.61 million and 1.18 million respectively. So exposure to pollutants, increased carcinogens, lead to uh, chronic inflammation induced by carcinogens, and they made them susceptible to lung cancer. Now the basic, um, um, really the, uh, what we call, the, we call it the medicine, the basic pathogenesis, how it does happen, is there's lung injury, there's inflammation, there is also exposure to carcinogens, which generate a lot of cytokines, and also um, increase exposure for that little vicious circle. They have interstitial lung disease, and some of them can easily go on to develop cancer. Now, this diagram shows the, the five main things that happen to the lung. One, lung cancer, impaired lung function, the worsens of asthma symptoms, increased chronic obstructive airway disease, and acute respiratory infections especially in the young and the old above 60. Well, cardiovascular system, one of the big things people have found out with cardiovascular system is increase in coronary artery disease. Patients who are exposed to air pollution are likely to have fatal and non-fatal coronary artery disease. Now, in those days, coronary artery disease was uncommon in our environment because we are, we are our diet was not um, in keeping with uh, things that can lead to um, a lot of lipids in the in the in the vessels, and we are very active. But now, with sedentary lifestyle, then coupled with the diet we are now having, and then with environmental pollution, coronary disease has increased. Heart failure also has been has been adduced, increasing heart failure to air pollution, especially due to carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxide, and those who have increased PM and has been used cost, is a cause of risk of hospitalization and death from congestive heart failure. Cardiac arrhythmias, you know, ventricular arrhythmias has a weak direct correlation with exposure. But in many cases, 
is also implicated in out of hospital cardiac arrest. Cerebrovascular system, uh, disease, in the so called escape study, I found that 19% increase in the risk of stroke, you know, due to exposure to particulates of PM 2.5 in nearly 100,000 participants from 11 cohorts across Europe. Now, this is more in susceptible patients who are both 60 and those who are even non smokers but are exposed to that particulate matter. Now, thrombosis is also a big factor, and that can also lead to myocardial infarction. And has been found in patients who are exposed to traffic emissions, you know, and um, chronic uh, exposure to ambient air pollution, leading to venous thromboembolism. That has been a cause of cardiovascular mortality, uh, mortality in patients. Well, as I said before, the, uh, using a layman language, the hardening of the vessels it's a positive um, um, correlation between those who are PM 2.5 exposure and atherosclerotic body in patients, and that can also make them susceptible to heart conditions. Now, systemic vascular dysfunction, this is almost similar to what I'm talking. They have myocardial ischemia, there's little blood in the heart, then lead to a major catastrophic event called myocardial infarction. And this also has been attributed to particulate matters and also to um, gas exposure. And this also will lead to systemic vascular dysfunction. Other things is that particulate matters and natural oxide, sulfur dioxide, can have a synergistic effect on both the cardiovascular system and respiratory system, leading to what we call inflammation and increase oxidative stress. And both of these conditions are predisposed to cardiovascular mortality, that's increased death and morbidity that increase disease due to heart disease. Now the mechanism are, are well written here, lung inflammation, particularly translocation, autonomic dysregulation. I don't need to bore you with all these terminologies. Now the, this summarizes the cardiovascular effect, arrhythmias, this change in your heart rhythm, Coronary artery disease lead to myocardial ischemia and also myocardial infarction, stroke, you know, and then hardening of the arteries and then heart failure. The other effects we'll be talking about is neurological effect. And patients who have been exposed, they find a lot of relationship between particulate matters and exposure to natural oxide, to sulfur dioxide, and to increase ozone, and also to carbon monoxide. Patients tend to be depressed, you know, that can, well, depression is such a big factor now in the world with this pandemic we are facing, coupled with the economic catastrophe that is around the world. But if that is also compounded between patients are exposed to a lot of environmental dis, uh, dysfunction, which is under-regulated. Now, dementia, dementia is becoming a very big concern. You see people who are 60 and above, even younger people, they forget easily, they're not able to coordinate properly, and they just live a very poor quality of life. And dementia has been associated with increased pollution. Now, cognitive development delay, that is, they, they are not able to, um, they're not able to get maturity in their cognitive function. That is, ability to, to coordinate and also to articulate factors properly. Now, the mechanism is still the same, increased airway pollution, systemic inflammation, and then a lot of oxidative stress and then reactive astrocytes. Now, skin change. Skin changes where air pollution has been assisted with skin aging, you know, rapid skin aging, and also have been assisted with skin blisters, and then skin redness and pigmentation of the spots on the skin. Well, I'm not sure whether it is directly associated with um, lung cancer, but certainly when you find out that we are exposed to, um, to um, a lot of um, sunlight and the layers that, that prevent excessive radiation is hampered by environmental pollution, that will make them more susceptible. Now for the newborn, it has also been found out that in the fetus, um, Environmental pollution can lead to feet impaired fetal growth and an increase in the size of the head. I don't know if the, if the 
by the increase of the size of the head, the brain will also be increased or the brain will be reduced, but then more susceptibility to hydrocephalus and such like. And then it can also give them a low birth weight. In summary, you see, uh, environmental pollution in the respiratory system is more in patients who are susceptible. The younger age group, because they have increased respiratory uh, disease and they have that reduces their immune system, and they are likely going to have pneumonia, and also are likely going to be have uh, have um, uh, acute respiratory infection. Those with asthma are likely going to have more exacerbation. They are going to have um, acute asthmatic attack, and then that can lead to death. The lung cancer, if they smoke, that has a synergetic effect, and those with COPD, and they can reduce lung function. Cardiovascular system basically is that of arrhythmias, high uh, stroke myocardial infarction, and heart failure. And skin, usually the skin aging, blisters, pigmentation. The logical system, they have what they call cognitive de depression, decline, and dementia, which is a very terrible situation. If you have someone who has dementia, it's a very bad thing to think about, then depression. Then for the fetus, it can lead to low birth weight. I think that is that summarizes um, some of the health effects of air pollution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc. Thank you for the very educated presentation, sir. Thank you, sir. Even though 10 minutes does not do one. justice. Yeah. So um, the next speaker, Ross, Miss Ross Heffers. Ross, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Um, okay. Do I have permission to share my screen here? Yes. yes um, okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Ayara. If we look at the messages in the chat room, somebody had said um, the host should minimize pictures of the panelists. It's blocking the slides. Right, okay. They want to see the slides. So La Sepa IT team, please minimize our pictures so people can you see know. the slides. And we will share this with everyone. Please put up your email address and you get a copy of all slides. Thank you. Taya, there's so much going on in the chat room. Uh, yes, you have I'm to aware. keep up with what people are saying. Okay. Um, okay. I think yeah, Ross, you can go ahead. Okay. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Dolapo and um, Tayo. Um, standing on existing protocol. So today I'm discussing. Um, my name is Rose. I work for the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, and I'm to discuss air pollution and impact on sustainable development goals. So um, before I go into that, I would just like to give a brief background on what we do as an office, the history of the 2030 agenda, um, the adoption of the 2030 agenda by uh, President Muhammad Buhari in 2015. Um, I'm assuming most people know about the SDGs. Um, there was a lot of consultation from 2013 to 2015 that better the SDGs. And the SDGs are about people, planet, partnership, peace, and prosperity. And I think today we're talking about planet and climate change. Um, as we all are aware, the SDGs are interconnected, interrelated, and indivisible. Um, the SDGs address all aspects of human and non-human endeavors and have essential implications. Um, the SDGs are made up of 17 goals, 169 targets, and 232 indicators. Um, the SDGs are in alignment with the African Union Agenda 2063 and the present, an opportunity for regional integration and interaction. Um, so I'll just give brief summary on SDG implementation progress in Nigeria. As an office, we have powerful mandate, strategic direction, um, representation, advocacy, partnership development, um, resource mobilization and management and m and &E. um, We've done a few things. I'll just quickly brush through them. 
Um, we developed the endpoint report, um, country strategy from the MDGs to the SDGs, um, integration of the SDGs into national development plan. Um, we've done the SDG needs assessment, costing exercise, data mapping, and we we have this multi-stakeholder engagement for SDG implementation. We launched the private sector advisory group on the SDGs. We have the donors partnership forum for SDGs. Um, we have the civil society strategic group on SDGs. Um, we have the presidential council on SDGs and we signed the MOU with the Nigerian Bar Association. We have SDG champions um, inaugurated um, youth for advocacy at the grassroots level. We have SDG ambassadors um, and we have development of coordination compact to improve participation by MDAs. Um, so to, based on the topic given to me, um, today is the International Day of Clean Air, the first of its kind. And um, thank you, Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency for inviting us to speak about the impact of air pollution and the SDGs. Um, so here, yeah, pollution of the air, water, soil, and workplace is an important threat to human development. The SDGs have a strong focus on reducing environmental pollution, specifically SDG 3, which is um, health and well-being, 3.96 to substantially reduce the number of death and illness from hazardous chemicals and air, water, and soil pollution and contamination by 2030. Many of the other goals are also related to pollution, including SDG 2.4, um, SDG 2 um, is zero hunger on improving soil quality, SDG 7 on clean energy, SDG 9.4 on clean technologies and industrial processes, SDG 11 on sustainable cities and communities. We have SDG 12 on responsible consumption and production and SDG 14 and 15 on conservation of water and land. People do not intentionally seek to cause pollution, but disposing of waste products into nearby environment is often the most convenient and inexpensive form of disposal. Thus, pollution, pollution is an example of indirect or second order environmental consequences of human development efforts throughout human history. People have modified the natural environment in many ways to increase their well being. Um, how, so I will discuss how air pollution relates to the SDGs. Um, SDG Go One, reducing air pollution can help families become healthier, save on medical expenses, and improve productivity. Just like Doctor presented on several courses on um, carbon emission on our health. Um, SDG Two, air, air pollution can cause crop damage and affect food quality and security. Um, we have the SDG Go Three, air pollution poses a major threat to human health. It's linked to respiratory infection and cardiovascular diseases. Um, we saw the previous presenter give us in-depth um, um, presentation on the effect of air pollution on our health. It causes increase in population mobility and mortality. Using SDG Goal 6, pollutants such as sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide from open um, cells and combustion of fossil fuel mixed with precipitation cause harmful acid rain that can pro compromise water quality, can irritate airways in the human respiratory system, also harm sensitive ecosystem, such as our, our lakes and forests. If we control this, it can help increase air quality. Um, how it affects SDG 7 is um, affordable and clean energy, electricity from renewable energy rather than fossil fuel offers significant public health benefits through a reduction in air pollution. SDG 8, air pollution impacts on health, crop, forest yields, ecosystems, the, cli the climate and the built environment with consequences of productivity and economic growth. Ambient and indoor air pollution also has ne negative effects on the working environment and its safety. Um, Looking at SDG Goal 9, power generation, industry, and transportation are large contributions to air pollution. We can see Lagos State um, has so many vehicles on the world. A new focus on decreasing energy consumption and on improving sustainable and public transportation could progressively reduce pollution in our societies. Um, SDG Goal 13, combustion of fossil fuels plays 
a key role in the process of climate change, which places food, air, and water supplies at risk and poses a major threat to human health. Um, using SDG goal 14, the disposition of air pollutants on waterway negatively affects its quality and life underwater. It can lead to eutrophication of fresh water bodies and accumulation of toxic met uh, metals and persistent organic pollutants in fresh and marine waters. Um, SDG 15, em emission from combustion of fossil fuels mixed with precipitation caused acid rains that pose emergent trends to our forests and ecosystem. So for me, um, in conclusion, I think achieving sustainable development will require strong action to reduce exposure to environmental pollution. Steady progress is being made to reduce traditional pollutants linked to poverty, such as household air pollution and our safe water source, sources. For example, the use of improved cooked stove and modern foils has reduced household air pollution and access to improved sanitation facilities has reduced exposure to waterborne pathogens. Nevertheless, there's still much work to be done on this front as over 4 million people still die annually from traditional pollutants in our societies. Um, we can conclude by saying technological innovations are needed to make inexpensive integrated sensors for the most significant pollutants, as well as platform for data collection, validation, analysis, and dissemination. Um, I thank you, and I think uh, I want to commend the Lagos State Government for this. And um, in this decade of action, we need to achieve those SDGs. We have 10 more years to go. And, um, Based on state, I can see Lagos State, one of the key priorities um, is the environmental dimension of the SDGs. So I thank you for listening and I thank you for the invitation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Rose. Um, just before you go, uh, SDGs had uh, this Nigeria Integrated National Framework or Financing Framework a couple of days back, I think last week. Would you like to share some thoughts about that and how this um, trying to address the SDGs, the goals, as well as an issue like climate change and pollution, how does it fit into that financing framework? Are there um, specific areas that the financing framework targets or is it like a broad um, financing framework for all the SDGs goals? Thank you. Okay, thank you. The INFF was um, the Integrated National Financial Framework was inaugurated by the Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and Planning um, in partnership with UN UNDP, our office, EU development partners, basically to bridge the financing gap for us to achieve the SDGs in the next 10 years. And um, basically it's um, based on the ISDG model, the simulation tool says Nigeria needs about $80 billion to achieve the 2030 agenda. So basically the INFF is just a framework to help us bridge the financing gap. How do we use innovative financing to finance the achievement of the SDGs through public partnership, um, through collaboration, both with the public and the private sector. So basically for now, we just finished the first report, which is the development financing assessment. And um, well, I think based on the priority of the government um, of President Buhari and individual states, um, we'll, financing will go to specific sectoral issues. Like I think Lagos State can prioritize the environmental dimension of the SDGs. Thank you. Okay. I'm sure the general manager will be interested in how Lagos State can um, benefit from that. <laughs> Thank you once again, Rose. Um, so Ms. Roskefa has been able to share with us the SDGs goals, what it's all about, and as well as the decade of action that we're about to enter into. As I said, decade of action is very important to the world in general, and as well as Nigeria, because we're part of um, well have developmental challenges that need to be addressed, or rather that the SDGs goals can um, address for us. So once again, thank you for um, the presentation. And I'm sure people will, I mean, at the end of the presentation, we'll still take questions that you will respond to. Thank you once again. Thank you. Um, so the next presentation will be having um, Dr. Pashaway, are you ready? Then the gentleman. Yes, sir. Uh, I am ready. 
I'm just going to try and share my screen. Can we all see? Can we see? No, I still have Rose's screen. Oh, sorry, I've turned it up. Sorry. <laughs> Hold on a minute, let me try. But as I go on, trying to share my screen. Good afternoon, everyone. So, so delighted with the turnout and um, the discussion we're having today. Thank you, Professor Erabo. Professor Erabo was my teacher. I remember medical ward rounds we would always want him to examine us because you won't fail if it's Professor Irabo. He asked you, nice to have you here again in a different way. So, because Health is my first love. I am equally in love with the environment. Um, I can't, lie, but how we are policy with activities Lagos. I'll start by. is a big for health, for the environment, for human beings, for even the whole ecosystem. You came across go. This air pollution is health. Single of the avoidable causes of death and disease globally. Estimated that in 2015, 6.5 million people died. This is worse in developing countries. Listen, developing low income. Yeah. A lot of our cities fall into, into that group. And who is affected the most? Women, children. Because of cocaine, everything Rabo has said, indoor pollution, outdoor pollution, is women and children is the same most avoidable cause of death. So it is a, this is the first time in the environment space. It occurred to me that I could have come from during the lockdown, corona lockdown. During the corona lockdown, it was documented that Lagos State had one of the best AQIs in the world. And we in La Sepa also did some studies that corroborated that we had clear blue skies. And I'm sure all over the world that happened. I read somewhere also that it's not likely that in the next 10 years, if we don't have such a shutdown, that people will experience that kind of air quality if action is not taken. And what happened? All the industries were shut down. Vehicular emissions were cut to zero. Production was at zero. I'm sorry, I'm not following my slides. It's just easier to have a discussion. Production was at zero, and we had good air quality. I believe this is what has made people come together to say, 
Must we have a pandemic to so have clear blue skies? The answer is no. If we're all working together. We know Lagos states, the major sources of air pollution in Lagos states is vehicular emissions and industrial emissions. In the low income, high density areas, they still cook with fossil fuels. At times indoors, we have heard of many people die of carbon monoxide poisoning because of um, um, generator films. So it's not even only cooking, emissions. So we say, oh, we are not near an industry. Me, I just live in Ilupeju silently with my family. The fumes from a generator that is not combusting for fully, I pass my neighbor. It's, it's, it is killing all these children. And all of us, as Professor Irabo has said, you know, the top three pollutants in Lagos State, after doing a lot of studies and source apportionment, is vehicular, industrial, and generators. It's amazing. Everywhere generators are on. And apart from generators being on, there are bad generators that have no this. So if we start put um, Q, QEM machines everywhere or AQI, we would see that we're sitting on a time bomb about to explode clean and day-to-day -day lives of people. I've said we're going to have a discussion. It is because of this interest in international cities. Remember, Professor had said in 2014, there was 16.5 um, million. Do you remember what I was trying to write it down? There was 2014, there was over 50 million number of deaths due to air pollution, cancer, the UN study, it had reduced to 16.5 million. That means international communities, people like uh, thank the United Nations, we thank SDG, we thank IFC, we thank the world, we thank the, the National Day of Clean Air for Blue Skies. But is this sustainable? Do we just have discussions and our life? The answer is to sustain it, we all have to be on our toes 24-7, especially in a state like Lagos State, where the commercial and economic area in a urbanization, urbanization that is not matching the, we are quickly urbanizing and us policy makers making enough policy. For example, when I was growing up, we had um, in what thing, sterilizer, that metal thing, we pour it into Coca-Cola, um, treat up bottles and do bonnets. Pet coke used to be for people that came from London. We will pour our water in it, put it in the fridge, refill it over and over and over again. Then we allow NBC to bring plastic bottles into Nigeria without thinking through recycling and our dump sites and what we do with these plastics after. So that is following trend and urbanization without thinking it. Another example is that Lagos State is making so much progress in these things. In 2017, a study was done which led us to insist that the sulfur content of um, fuel must be lowered to three. It started from 3,000 parts per million. We insisted that it must be lowered to 50 parts per million for diesel and for petrol, 1,000 parts per million, and it was lowered to 150 parts 
a million for gasoline and petrol. And guess what? The oil still powers, the petrol gas still powers our cars, still powers our generators. They just have to find technology that will reduce the sulfur content. So until we start to make these policies and hold producers responsible, we will just have these conversations forever and nothing will happen. So before 2017 generator, from 1,000 parts per million to 50 parts per million. And there's nothing wrong with the fuel. If we understand action, look at Lagos State, where is, is the smallest state in form of, in form of land mass. Yet, we are the man is supposed to be the state of aquatic splendor. It rains. And look at the coasts of Lagos. All sorts of non-degradable material. Even in this age of corona, PPEs. So, it is high time we started to actively fight and talk about this. Everything I said about, I want to say about air pollution earlier on. The second statement, air pollution is proportionately, that means unfairly, particularly in low income earners, which is a big percentage of Lagos and Nigeria, indoor cooking, cooking laws, you are by your shop in, in the market, somebody is roasting corn, um, boiling, boiling, all those are slowly, education is a problem, people don't know. So air quality, poor air quality, to sustainable development growth, especially for Nigeria. And I think SDGs, I was happy with the once again I've read most of it are around health and environment. So all, all the fun it to help us. Health and environment, and then we can start talking. He said, um, like Prof, we will not talk through these slides. We know the sources of happening in Lagos State. Look at this picture road transport industrial emission, um, road transport, industrial I, am, I can see from the chat that my audio is poor. Can we still hear? Can we hear me clearly? Yes. Yes, we can. But it's breaking. It's breaking, yeah. Maybe you should turn off your video. It might help. Okay. Reface. Okay. No. Okay. I think it's better. Hello. Um, send. Can you hear me, please? Yes. The line is still breaking. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So we have seen um, the major sources of air pollution in Lagos State. Something I would like to talk about is a presentation I listened to from Federal Ministry of Environment a couple of days ago. What is the cost of doing nothing if we continue to have these conversations 
and we don't do anything about it. We would have one, unreliable environmental data. We cannot, we, we lose the opportunity to formulate sustainable environmental policies for the present and future generations of Nigerians. If we don't have an environmental data bank measuring every day consistently, sustainably, our air quality. We also have increased debts, as Professor has outlined, due to unabated industrial emissions, and not only industrial emissions, all forms of air pollution. It may amaze you that in Lagos State, we also focus on noise pollution. And we have seen people lose their source of hearing from noise pollution. We have reduced productivity. We have increased health burden for spending. We have reduced efficiency of regulators. And we are exposed to litigations. People are starting to understand their rights. We also have loss of, we, we, we will start to lose access to foreign grants if we don't continue to have conversations like this. These pictures are horrible and they speak for themselves. This is um, a little bit too, too many figures, but if we imagine that, so particulate matters, PM10 are small solid particles that can penetrate the airways and the lungs. High exposure can lead to everything Professor Erabo spoke about, cancer, asthma, cardiovascular diseases, and your life, uh, life expectancy is reduced. Now think of how much time we spend in a five hour journey. PM 2.5 is the most important particular emission. For people who are not medical and um, environmental, in simple English, our lungs cannot filter things that are heavy. It can filter things that are light in the air. So the heavier the things are in the air, the more difficult it is for us to breathe. So what we are looking for really, the most important is PM 2.5. It's a lot of technical jargons, I'm sorry. However, just know that when you are starting to see things in the air, it is settling in your lungs and your lungs were not made to filter it. Look at road transports. A study was done by World Bank. It is the primary source of PM 2.5. And when we use old technologies and fuel with high sulfur, which we currently use now, we are exposing ourselves to diseases without knowing. Guess what? I'm so sad to say that our sulfur levels are 200 times higher than the US standard when we use diesel. This same diesel, we burn it, a lot of us, every day. We've conducted studies with Lamata and we can see the outcome of the studies. Look at industrial emissions. Go to um, Alaba, go to Ikorodu, where there's a lot of steel manufacturing, and do air sampling or water sampling. You will understand what I am talking about. It is also recorded that all those smelting factories <laughs> the PM of 2.5 concentration, it's, it's, digit, it's too much figures. Smelting factories make us more susceptible to diseases because of the particulate matter, what comes into the air from those activities. We need to pay more attention and make more policies regarding this. Now, power supply. Everybody is a stakeholder. If NEPA is constant, then we are burning less diesel. And we are encouraging people to look for alternate source of power 
clean energy, solar, um, inverters, hybrids, start using gas. Lagos State is looking into that. Now look at dump sites too. We have dump sites that developments have come to meet. Our dump sites in Lagos were built away from human beings. But because of lack of land, people keep um, moving towards um, dump sites and they breathe in all these things, the soxes and the noxes. Even we have done water sampling around some dump sites and we have heavy metals. We have mercury, we have lead. It's, it's, it's dangerous. And um, we as policymakers cannot continue to ignore that. I will skip that slide. Lagos State Environmental Management Protection Agency is waking up to its activities. It's waking up to its responsibilities. We are to protect the air, water, and all natural resources in the state. The law allows us to. And working with the academia, with medical doctors and all stakeholders, I'm sure we will start to make better policies that would give us bluer skies and cleaner air without a pandemic forcing us to stay in, indoors and stop production. There are healthier ways of producing. There are better ways of manufacturing. As we are moving with industrialization and urbanization, we have to move with the people we are copying. We are battling noise pollution in Lagos State now. And it is pleasing to note that 70% of the entertainment industry are now soundproofing their bars and clubs and disco sites. Because these same people travel abroad, you open a door, the kind of music that hits you, you don't even hear it on the streets. Event centers are to follow suit, churches and mosques are to follow suit in a practical and sustainable way. Moving forward is to make easy policies, S-M-A-R-C policies. We are not overtly ambitious. Right now, we are collaborating with parks and gardens to plant more trees. That's a picture of um, the deputy governor's wife. That's Dr. Fashaway taking part in the annual tree planting. We also have a project ongoing, funded by the World Bank. We have um, six AQM machines in strategic areas of Lagos metropolis, just to have baseline studies. We're already talking to Lamata to look at them turning their buses to hybrid or fully gas-powered buses. And then, you know, the overall aim is just to clean the ears and have blue skies. Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources are also our major stakeholders. We are going to latch on to SDG very strongly now. Ms. Rose, we're excited to have you here. And you see all we are trying to do. I'm very happy about the fourth point so we have this initiative where when bakers, bakeries change from wooden to electrical or gas powered um, ovens, we give them incentives, we celebrate them, we even give free gas or awards. And it's interesting to know that a large percentage of these people are moving to gas. And they're even seeing that they are producing more bread with less um, energy, less time, and less stress. So a lot of these little, little low-hanging um, fruits can be pushed out there with the support of people like everyone listening out here. Mass media also has a lot of role to play. The truth is, before I came into environment, I didn't know... 20% of the things I know now. As simple as sorting our waste, as simple as reusing, reducing, 
recycling and rethinking our habits can make a whole difference. I conclude by saying air pollution is a global environmental challenge. The only thing we have in common in the whole world is oxygen. Be you Caucasian, be you Antarctica, be you um, under the water, air that we breathe is what binds us together on, until we involve all stakeholders and we start to make collective efforts. Nothing is going to change. And we are desirous of change. So collective efforts of all of us will surely, surely bring the desired change that we all look forward to. And thank you very much for listening. That's it. Thank you very much, Dr. Fashauer. That's the first female general manager of La Sepa. I think I'm right with that. And I must say that on the African scene, a lot of the environmental agencies are now in the hands of women. I mean, UNEP is being edited by a woman. Um, I think uh, vice, uh, the, the undersecretary as well, or the vice ES is also a woman. The head of the United Nations Biodiversity Agency is also a woman. Um, even in Nigeria, the immediate past Minister of Environment was a woman. Um, the, President the men State will the come woman. for you. We're not sexist. <laughs> no, but we just have to say the way it is. Um, the present Minister of State for Environment is a woman, and she's doing fantastic um, fits at uh, the ministry. Um, so it's not um, a mistake that you're the GM at this point in time. You try it for a reason, and it's just in line with the, what is happening on the global environmental scene. So once again, thank you for your presentation. Um, just to recap what the GM has said, we talked about basically that the, um, air pollution is a silent killer. I mean, just to summarize it, and she itemized the three main sources of air pollution that we have in Lagos, which is um, as industrialization, the transport, and power generation. As we all know, I mean, power generation is not what, we, what it should be, so we all have to um, use generators. And that's one of the main sources of air pollution. Industrialization, industrialization as well, and transport. I mean, everywhere in Lagos, there's always traffic. And when there's traffic, obviously, there's um, pollution from the vehicles. And um, so she also itemized the way forward for the, the initiatives that La CEPA, the agency, is trying to do to reverse the trend. She talked about uh, the collaboration with other agencies like the World Bank and what they're currently doing with um, um, the six air quality man measuring machines that they have. In trying to measure, uh, to get data, I mean, she also mentioned that data is key to plan. I mean, and that's applicable in any environment that we are in. Without data, we can't plan adequately for the future or for what we want to do. So no matter how much we talk about um, trying to change things, without data, we won't be able to plan adequately. And uh, she also talked about the collaboration with other um, agencies like the Ministry of Transport and Lamata on trying to introduce low carbon emission buses in Lagos. I mean, that would be fantastic as well as um, trying to also encourage climate smart production for I mean, SMEs, like people, the bakeries, the people that smoke fish in the, in the market. I mean, if they can all adopt climate smart practices, then that will also go a long way to improve the air quality. So once again, thank you very much, Ma, for your presentation. Um, we have some questions. So this is the Q&A session. We have lots of questions and um, suggestions on the chat room. Um, Prof, are you still there? Hello? Uh, Prof is about to escape. You know, I told you that. <laughs> yes, I know. Okay, so one, just one question for you, sir, before you go. Uh, uh, yes, I do, because I'm about to. Uh, I want to um, thank my dear friend for her beautiful presentation. Okay. She is now more or less of a, what do you call it, a consultant in environmental things. Okay. She combined the two fields in a very unique point. I've always known her being very. Um, woman of, um, I don't know, uh, versatility and um, and uh, what do you call it, commitment. Trouble to some prof <laughs> <laughs> So please, can I ask the question quickly? Because I told you that I was supposed to have another appointment. Yes, sir. so somebody yeah. has asked the question about if there's any established link between air pollution and the coronavirus. Um, but before you answer, I'm aware there's been some studies in trying to link the mortality rate from coronavirus. Yes, Ayara, let Prof talk and go. 
<laughs> yes, um, so well, it is, it is so difficult for anyone to really make any conclusive thing about coronavirus. In fact, no one can tell anything conclusive because we are still gathering data and it's still so early. Now, the first case came out about December, is not about December, and now we are still going on. You know, they've been up and down speculations. For example, at a particular time, they say, well, coronavirus, if you have um, asthma, it's protective mm -hmm. against coronavirus, but they are changing their views. So I, I, I will not conclude, I will not speak anything about that. But let me say this. We all thought that when the summer um, came up, that coronavirus will dip, I mean, will be a dive down, because we felt that cold enhances its uh, perpetuation and transmission. But well, that has been debunked by current reality. So I think it is too early for anyone to say whether there's a causal relationship between environmental and COVID. Thank you very much, sir. So, I would like well, to add to that, sir. Yeah, what I yeah. have read also, and there have been studies that say PM 2.5 worsens the outcome of all infectious diseases, including coronavirus. And when people that live in polluted environments are more likely to suffer increased morbidity and mortality. Have you experienced that in your practice? Yeah, yes, I agree with you in the sense that uh, an underlying condition, as I said before, any underlying condition of the lungs, you get it? And then if you are not exposed to environmental pollution, it's one of the greatest, one of the big problem in um, coronavirus is cytokine storm. And cytokine storm is due to um, inflammation that goes on and they give, give them a very um, rapid descent to deoxygenation and then they need, it, they need to have ventilators and that's also going to lead them to death. So now if a person is exposed to a lot of pollutants, that would increase the inflammation. And that, that would exacerbate the cytokine storm. Now, for, logically, and so any, if you are, if you have a bad lung, starting with a bad lung and a bad environment, then your mortality and mobility will be enhanced. But the data are still, you know, are still coming up. We cannot just use um, just causal effects. We have to look at it over time, longitudinally, and see whether this is a factor that can be attributable to COVID-19 per se. We can isolate COVID-19 among other things that happen on the road. But certainly, exposure to environmental pollution will certainly uh, increase any inflammation that already exists and increase the cytokine lungs, uh, cytokine storm patient with COVID. Thank you very much, Prof. Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm so glad to be in your midst. Yes. I wish you a very successful program. Thank you, sir. Good to yeah. have you. Yeah. Um, Prof has another engagement, so he has to take his leave. So thank you very much for your presentation. And we hope that um, Lasepa and yourself will definitely in future have some further engagements towards yeah. this conversation. So thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Eh? If you want to, if you want us to get a short write-up on this, you can contact me later so that we can put all these things together. We okay. in academics, okay. we like documentation. <laughs> yes. At least you can, if you want us to put it together, this conference took place and then uh, all the speakers can have a summarized um, uh, uh, summary of what they are presented. Yes. Yes. With my, yes. uh, and then put a small part right into the No problem, so we'll reach out to you on that score. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Bye. Yeah. Um, so the other questions we have are mainly for um, Dr. Fashawe. Hope you are ready to take all the questions. Hello? Yes, I'm here. What time okay. is this session uh, ending? Yeah, well, it's just 12.30, so I think we should just, uh, 12.45. Like so minutes. one question. Um, one minute. Let's yeah. go. I have my okay. colleagues online too. I can call oh, on okay. any of them to oh, answer. So, um, last people be on standby. 
Okay. Let's we'll go. We we'll would also like to give some of the participants an opportunity to ask um, questions, like one or two. Cool, but that's possible. Okay, so there's a question from somebody here that talks about the ongoing urbanization in the lake here, where access. And the person has talked about the Dangote refinery, that, and which has called for that development around that access. And the person has asked, what, what is La Sepa doing, or what is Lagos State doing to, to prevent what is happening now in the main city, to prevent it from happening in that access? Any thoughts on that? OK, quickly, the truth, like I said, is that environment has no boundaries. The refinery is in an area called Lekki Free Trade Zone. In a free trade zone, there are laws that govern the activity that go on there. It's, it could be concurrent, it could be exclusive. Right now, the federal ministry controls free trade zones. However, any activity happening in Lagos that affects Lagos environment, we have um, legal rights to look into it. We're talking with um, the refinery, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, and um, La Sepa, Ministry of Environment. We have a stakeholders group. And I'm happy to say that that refinery has a very, very big and healthy, robust HSE department, health and safety. We are not unaware of the effects of refining and flaring gas, but we also know that there are better ways, cleaner ways, and opportunity of waste to wealth in these activities. And yes, we're looking at it very soon. We would come out there to say what we're doing to remediate or abate. Like I said, industrialization is important. It is good for Nigeria to have its first refinery instead of us exporting crude, let's refine it here. But the attendant pollution that comes with it also, we have to address, and we are not ignoring this. Lagos State is not ignoring it. The Federal Ministry of Environment is not ignoring it. Thank you. Next. Let me stop my video. Maybe my voice is clearer when I stop it. Miss Rose, is it better now? Yes, it is. I think it's tired as frozen. But there's another question that says, what is the policy of Lagos State in ensuring clean air is a fundamental human right in Lagos? How do we minimize generator fumes, reduce refuse burning, and help manufacturers transit to clean energy? So... so Clean air and a noiseless environment is a fundamental human right. If you follow us actively on our website, you will see all our activities. Currently, we're partnering with Federal Ministry of Environment to make natural gas use a priority across industries and road transport workers. But you know, we can't ignore the economic status of Nigeria. We can't tell someone, go and change your car to um, gas now, now, or we arrest you. There'll be chaos and anarchy. It's a gradual process. We've formed various stakeholders, and we're looking into it. We also have state-based policies that is mandating industries to produce at higher standards. We have been talking with MAN, Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, and other relevant bodies. If you follow us clearly, you will know that we have also gone out hard on noise pollution. People are starting to understand what is allowable, what decibels are, what is allowable in a public space and in your home. We are also leveraging on partnerships with NGOs, SDGs, um, and World Bank, and UN, to find a way to launch incentivized schemes and do a lot of advocacy. Advocacy, advocacy, advocacy. 
not only advocacy, we educate and we communicate. When people start to understand the effects of air quality, they will start to change their behaviors. And when they also know there's an agency that you can report air pollution of any kind, water, noise too, and we take actions, things will change gradually. Yes, clean air is a fundamental human right. However, it is a collective effort. And it starts with the person asking the question and everyone here. The state cannot do it alone. Let us start to change our habits. Let us read more on how we impact the environment. Ordinary sorting our waste and deciding to say no to single-use plastics and using more biodegradable papers or we go to the market with the same shopping bag and we don't collect 100 nylon bags from shop rights, which will end up in our drains. We will all have um, 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 better quality water and air. So it's a collective effort. Thank you for that question. And we hope you join us in this fundamental human rights drive. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, most of the questions have already been answered one way or the other during the presentations. But just to recap, somebody has asked about um, if the agency would like to partner with CSOs, which we already talked about. We talked about trying to partner with NGOs. Um, so let, the, let CSOs and agencies, let CSOs, NGOs, um, student union, freedom fighters, green initiatives, please go on our website www.lasepa.gov.ng -E There's opportunity to communicate with us and partner with us. It's a very interactive website. So the answer is yes. Okay, so thank you for that. Um, somebody has also asked about how to pace out um, the use of generators and how to make transportation more low carbon, uh, or rather to make our transportation means low carbon. Um, I think you talked about that as well, which you, you said it's not that easy. Uh, you can mandate people to change their cars. But I think what you would like to know is how soon can this be backed by policy? I mean, either, um, for example, you talked about the buses, the Lamata buses. How soon will this happen? Like so it is people. happening already. It is happening. We have hybrid cars in Lagos. La Sepa is trying to turn some of its official vehicles into hybrid engines. We have hybrid buses coming up soon. And um, it will happen. The truth is, if a policy is not well thought through, if you don't provide affordable and available alternative, it will fail. So until we have gas in stations and it is cheap and easy to convert all those buses and um, Molloys and Ubers, we will continue to just educate. And I like the question. Let's keep talking about it. The person that asked the question, is this car hybrid or not? <laughs> I want to know. Okay. It's possible to convert your car to gas and petrol. So start with yourself, sir, and we will okay. celebrate you and have others follow. Right. So the GM has talked about behavioral change, so we need to start with ourselves. So we can all change our cars, the individual cars to hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> the GM's car is not even hybrid yet. <laughs> so, um, can we have questions, audio questions now? Yeah, wait, Taya, there are a few questions you missed about strict measures mm -hmm. by Lagos State on air pollution. That Ms. We'll Rose, keep... you will answer that one too. No, 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 I'm not in, in Lagos State. So they're asking <laughs> this you. Is can you unmute yourself? That's my director of emissions and yeah. air pollution in La Sepa. Please yeah. answer that question for Ms. Rose. And also, some site. In Lagos State, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody asked sorry, about Olusu. Question again. I'm sorry, I didn't. Oh, okay. Hello, I asked about free. Um, what measures are Lagos State is Lagos State taking to address okay. air pollution? Okay. Don't give strict measures or laws or enforce laws. We'll come back with the same. 
organization over and again. So how is Lagos take, taking uh, proactive measures or laws to address uh, pollution? And also, what is Lagos State doing about dump sites? Yeah, particularly the Olu Sosun dump site. Hi, you pay me okay, thank you very much. Um, just like... <laughs> Just like my GM said, um, we are working with the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria concerning industrial machines and how to convert them to cleaner energy instead of regular diesel and petrol powered. Like some of them are converting their generators to hybrid type that can equally use gas. So we are really see programs with a, on sectoral basis to address each of these problems. And on the issue of the dump site, I believe Loma is doing so much to probably close down some of these uh, dump sites that are close to the cities. So it's a matter of time, we'll get there. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, can we take just one um, audio question at the time? Uh, hello? Can we take one question? Hello, yes. Hello, yeah, go ahead. Hello? 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 Hello, yeah, please go ahead. So. Yes, thank you very much. My name is... My question is just... Um, based on the presentation that was uh, done by the, uh, the GM, Dr. I wanted to ask, what is the measure or what is your level of partnership with LASPAC on the issue of your tree planting and how are you making sure that those trees that are planted, um, there's a process or there's a structure of mitigation or let me say, there's a way whereby you are making sure that those trees are not, you know, fall off or what are the measures you are taking to make sure that those trees are growing because Presently, uh, the issue of tree planting in Nigeria now has become a big problem that we set a target to plant trees, but we don't set a target concerning the sustainability of those trees and the planting. And this is the only way or one of the ways we can use to measure our air quality or how we can get more, like, like the GM said that, uh, um, um, what they call it, our air is something that combines this or brings everybody together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Olumide. Um, is our Natural Resource Protection Department on this forum. I'm happy to announce that La Sepa now has a Natural Resource Protection Department. Great. Mrs. Shonibari, are they here? If they are here, they will tell us that the main KPI for them is number of trees planted, number of trees enumerated, and number of people we have gotten to plant trees. Not only are we collaborating with LASPAC, we are trying to enumerate, keep records, and nurture those trees. And um, the last tree planting day, we also partnered with many other industries who have nothing to do with the environment, encouraging them to have a certain percentage of their complex planted with trees. We are looking at a possibility of actually enacting a policy that for X square meters, there must be X square meters of greenery. And in Lagos states, you cannot fell a tree without a permission. It's an offense punishable by fine. And not only is it punishable by fine, you will pay for transplanting that tree or pay to plant another tree, another tree. There's a lot of collaboration and partnership, and I look forward to, we all look forward to a day where we can easily tap on our computers and see how many trees have been planted that day, and what states are the ones planted same time last year are in. Thank you, Mr. Lumide. That's a good question, and we're happy to work with CSOs, NGOs, and many other people out there listening on sustainable tree planting. 
not just tree planting. Yes, yes. Sorry, I, and in coupon, in addition to what my GM just said, uh, most trees now are labeled after individual. They are tagged. So if a tree is named after you, it's a bit to ensure that it doesn't die. So the responsibility is on you to sustain it. So it's uh, one of the ways of uh, keeping them alive. And even when people marry or give birth now, they, they just celebrate by planting trees around their homes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I think what the agency could do is to uh, do a bit of more awareness on some of these initiatives. For example, how many trees planted, how many trees nurtured, and like I'm just publishing this data, either quarterly or um, twice a year, so people can um, track the progress of uh, people that are interested, particularly like CSOs and NGOs, can track this progress, and they can reference this data if it's needed. So, Somebody also asked them another question for the GM or for the director. If um, any plans to do awareness on air pollution, and also, for example, we've talked about, like the GM said, lots of terms and terminologies that might not be, um, might not be easy for people to understand, PM 2.5, PM 10, um, whatnot. So mm -hmm. is there any plan to do a bit of sensitization to, to the um, citizens about, I mean, to break down these terminologies or jargons in a very layman's um, terms that people can understand? So they can easily know that, oh, if I stand by the woman that is um, doing um, corn or I'm going to eat mama food somewhere and the smoke from the wooden fire, I need to move away. I need to protect myself. Is there any plan for that? Yes. Um, for us, we are, a lot of uh, sensitization and awareness is going on. We have handbills in the three major languages so that people can understand the implications of all of this to their health. Uh, one of such is um, the issue of uh, public smoking. You know, in Lagos State, uh, there's a law that bans uh, public smoking. If you must smoke, you must smoke in a designated smoking area so that uh, people around you are not exposed to nicotine and some of the chemicals in the cigarette. So these are some of the measures we have in place. A lot of awareness and sensitization is going on. Well, the, when, when you have uh, people um, uh, frying um, Akara by the roadside, you tell them the implications, and some of them are changing to gas, to gas-powered uh, um, cookers. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, by the time we're able to explain to them the implication of, uh, of it on their health, they tend to understand and change. It's just a matter of time. We'll get there because some of them will tell us about the cost implications. And that was why the Minister of Energy at the time came in to distribute uh, free gas uh, cylinders to the low income earners in Lagos. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Um, so, what, the last question from Solarity Mujo. Are you there? Is Solarity Mujo there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. go ahead. Ma. I can hear you. Okay. Hello. Very brief, Ma. Hello, we can hear you very brief. Yes. I'm sorry, there's no uh, place to private chat, Dr. Fashawe, the DG of La Sepa. I am a fumigation vendor. I registered and I renew my license with La Sepa. But unfortunately, local government officials are not allowing us to do our work with some clients. So how do you air post the DG, ma? Thank you. Thank you very much, ma. Air pollution and clean air and blue sky is the topic for today. However, I will indulge you because we have gotten these complaints over and over again. As of two weeks ago, we had a meeting with Ministry of Local Government Affairs and a lot of the activities going on at that grassroots level are not exactly legal. We will come out with a joint statement very soon so that all, all, everyone accredited and registered with us, we know their rights and what that accreditation means. Even if you are in the local government or outside the local government, we are working on this, ma'am, and um, you can make your complaints on our website as well. The more the complaints, 
the better it is for us to make a case for you out there. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. So that will be the last um, question for today. And lastly, Mr. Olaide Johnson has asked that a tree should be named after him. So I think Lasefa should take that, take note of that and name it. Said what? Uh, Mr. Olaide. Mr. Olaide Johnson. He wants it one tree to be named after him in Lagos. Mr. Olaide Johnson, kindly contact us and you we will join you in planting the tree planting the tree we will name it after you and you will nurture the tree for us you will go and pour water oh, make sure to put this okay. dumping okay. thing by your tree we will work with you and we will name after you please contact us thank you oh, she's, uh, she's mrs alaide johnson not mr sorry mrs. Mrs. Yes. you see it's women that do these things <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, thank you to the panelists, Prof, um, Ross, and the GM, and to everybody that has joined this webinar. Um, I'm sure right now we all have an idea of where Lagos State is going. Is clean air possible in Lagos? I think the answer is yes, but obviously there has to be um, commitment to this task. I mean, it's um, as an ambitious task, but it's achievable. And some of the commitments, as the GM has said, is the new initi initiatives they've adopted and also the partnerships that they're working on and further partnerships they intend to adopt, particularly with agencies like the SDGs and other um, partners. So, um, so maybe next year, by the time we're celebrating the second um, day, International Day for Clean Air for Blue Skies, the GM will be able to tell the Lagosians and the world what has transpired, what they've done, and where they've moved to, they're able to track their progress from now. Before we go, Mr. Ayara, my friend and sister, Mrs. Bolandi Olumeko from the UN is here. Okay. Okay. They're very good partners of ours. And um, I would like her to say a word or two about clean air for blue skies and how they intend to let us have something better to talk about next year. This time next year, we should be putting out facts and figures and the impact of this conversation led by the UN. Mrs. Olumeko, please, are you still here? Yes, I am. Good morning, everyone. And uh, <clears throat> good morning, Ms. Kefas. And it's been um, a wonderful discussion I've been following. Yes, this is the first one, and we're glad that uh, La Sepa is uh, commemorating this. Uh, for the coming years, I'm sure we will be able to collaborate better, and uh, hopefully COVID will have gone away, and then we'll be able to raise more awareness, <laughs> maybe walk, do a uh, walk around and ensure that everybody is aware of um, clean air and the importance of it. So usually we don't have... Uh, uh, a theme yet. Every year new themes come out. So we'll wait for that. But um, well done to La Sepa and we're glad this is uh, th th this was put up. And uh, we hope to continue to collaborate. We're looking forward to the e-waste day as well. Well done. Well done. Thank you very much, Mrs. Olumeko. I want to create the indulgence of Mr. Ayara. There's a certain Dr. Tokumbo Dabiri that is about to start a looter if we don't answer his question. Please find that question. <laughs> Dr. Dabiri, if you are here, you have the floor. I think, I hope he didn't get upset and left us. Dr. Dabiri, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. I'm a lady. I'm Dr. Mrs. Tokumbo Dabiri. Eh? The question, are you, can you uh, hear me now? Let's say to the governor. Yes, we can. Is that yeah. our Dr. Dabiri, ma? Yes, yes. Good afternoon, ma. Good afternoon, Dr. 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 Fashawe. Dr. to be special eh? advisor to the governor on AIDS control in Lagos State. I'm so happy I picked her. She's, she's our... Mentor in the medical field. Welcome, ma. Thank you very much, Dr. Fashawe. Very fantastic job you are doing at NASEPA. 
And uh, I have been following what you have been doing with Vera, Victoria Island and Ikoyi Resident Association, concerning especially the noise pollution aspect. This thing is actually like a one-off thing. I think you need to put more effort, you know. Now we have COVID, it's not so apparent, but we don't need to now wait for it. Now the rains are back again. The issue of these uh, dustbin dumps all over Lagos are becoming overwhelming. And you can imagine having just one episode of rain, heavy rain, and then you know what it means. So I think you need to collaborate with more of the agencies that are like you, that are very active like you, and do more. But you are doing very well. The issue of the tree planting, quite a number of us in Ikoyi and Victoria Island do want to partner with you concerning planting trees. Because I remember very well, my father, when he was in service, he planted two trees, one for in his name and one for my younger sister's name. But there wasn't any follow-up. So I am just wondering, if I now want to plant a tree, will there be a follow-up? So you need a very, very, very good database for you to have people to be interested in renewing our environment in that aspect too. Wonderful, wonderful job, and I'm very happy to be part of this initiative. And God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ma, for your comments. And once again, I'm happy we let you talk. We Ooh. also know experience is very much important, more than um, knowledge. And thank you very much for participating, Ma. God bless you. Okay. In Thank terms you. of noise pollution, Mrs. Shonibare, we, we, we are working very hard. And before the COVID pandemic, we were going to have um, a Noiseless Lagos program where we go about educating and um, talking about the dangers of noise pollution. It will still come up. And um, we, we prioritize issues as they affect our health and as they affect the current situation. Clean ears for blue skies is almost an emergency right now and we would have okay. to face it, ma. Thank you very much.